welcome to another gameplay episode from the Trinity series where Timmy's, Johnny's, and Spike's battle for all things EDH. I am Shannon the Johnny slash narrator and I'll be narrating this Commander Legends gameplay episode. Today we have Hog, the Spike, playing the partners Arden and Rograk. I, as the Johnny, will be playing Gen Arcanum Weaver. And then we've got Matt, another Spike, playing Zara, Renegade Recruiter. Lastly, Jamie, a third Spike, will be playing Arkelos, Lagoon Mystic. So we've got a bit of a Spike versus Spike versus Spike versus Johnny matchup this time around. Timmy's gonna sit this one out, but may show up in spirit. All right, on to the gameplay. Hog is gonna be playing first on the red playmat with the baby arm. I'll be playing second on the blue playmat. And then we've got Matt on the bottom right playing Zara. And then lastly, Jamie on that Arkelos Lagoon Mystic playing last. So pretty dangerous that what's probably gonna end up being a Voltron Boros fast attack build gets to play first here. We'll see how quickly this gameplay goes as Hog experiments using his daughter Ailey's arm as his left arm for this matchup. We're gonna go right into the game here as everyone finishes shuffling up their mulliganed hands. And Hog is gonna start with a turn one Rogue Rack. This has first strike menace and trample and it's a zero one. No surprise that's coming out on turn one without even needing a red mana. I'll be playing a tap land, being a little bit slow to start here. Or as Matt will be doing an ancient tomb into an arcane signet. That's the kind of start you'd expect to see out of spikes. Just lots of fast mana, lots of rocks. On to Jamie. We'll see if Jamie can match the speed at which we're seeing permanents hit the battlefield. Gonna do a turn one death Pride shaman. Pretty good. Technically it could be a mana dork but also some graveyard hate, not bad. Back to Hog, Hog playing a second white source, so off red, but plays a Boros Signet. So here comes another rock ramping. And on to me, I need to match some of this, uh, this, fast, this fast mana here, so I'm gonna play my Enchantress version, Starfield Mystic, making my enchantments cost one less. Not exactly as good as what they're playing, but on theme for me. Here comes Matt's second land, which ends up being a Maze of Ith, which is pretty interesting. Matt kept what was a fast hand, but is off mana, off double mana production, so. And once you use an early game Maze of Ith, I guess to just show Hog that attack shouldn't be coming Matt's way. Jamie's gonna play an island and pass back to Hog. And Hog is on the prowl, ready to suit up this Rograk, I, I assume. Turn two play for Hog is going to be a third white source, so a lot of planes. But hasn't missed a land drop. Pretty good for probably a low land count deck here. Going to play a Pure Steel Paladin. An excellent card for that deck and follow that up with a Sword of the Animus. So Pure Steel lets, lets you draw cards and you play equipment. And then once you have Metalcraft, three artifacts or, or more, your equip costs are zero. So really good in that deck. As is Sword of the Animus. So back to me, and I'll be following it up with another Enchantress engine, my Mesa Enchantress. So that gives me draw power based on playing enchantments. Back to Matt. Matt plays a Volcanic Island, so does prove that is not completely dead to Arcane Signet. You know, Arcane Signet's existence. Going to cast a Neheb Dreadhorde Champion, which is going to draw out a Mana Drain from Jamie. So Jamie's going to start main phase one of this turn with four colorless mana in their mana pool. Playing a fetch land, Jamie's gonna crack that. Giving him the ability to at least use this Deathrite Shaman as a mana dork this turn. But we should note that uh, Hog's, uh, Hog's Sword of the Animus is very good for a Boros deck. Good ramp engine. Whenever they swing, whenever uh, Hog swings with an equipped creature with Sword of the Animus, it gets to rampant growth, which is pretty strong. Jamie's gonna tap a green here and cast Wild Growth on this island. So the island now taps for Simic colors instead of just blue. So tapping that for a blue, nets an extra green, and then is going to cast an Arkelos, it looks like here, using some of that Mana Drain mana as well. So Arkelos is a 2-4, it says whenever uh, it is tapped, other permanents enter the battlefield tapped. And then as long as untapped, other permanents enter the battlefield untapped. So you start to get the idea that Jamie might, pl might be playing a stacks build, which is pretty much confirmed when this Wilderness Reclamation comes down. So it's possible that Jamie might try and set up a board state in which no one can untap anything uh, due to Arkelos. Meanwhile, Jamie gets untap at the end of their turn. Back to Hog. Hog on the fast, fast start plan. Plays a Black Blade Reforged, drawing off of Pure Steel Paladin. So, 
And then he's gonna try and follow that up with a Blood Forged Battle Axe. This one is whenever he hits somebody, it creates a copy of itself. But that's gonna draw out a Mental Misstep from Jamie. Jamie's gonna actually pay mana for that Mental Misstep, keep that life total nice and high. So, Hog now has Metal Craft, three uh, artifacts, so it can equip for free. So he's gonna stack all this stuff on this Rogue Rack and get revenge against the Counterspell champ over there, Jamie. Gonna swing at Jamie. I cannot say enough about how good of a synergy is going to be happening between Black Labor Forge and Sword of the Animus. One ramps you and one gives you power and toughness improved according to the number of lands you have in play. I'm going to be playing a Bitter Blossom on my turn, trying to create some blockers, although their relevance is pretty moot in this matchup considering Rograk has Trample. I'll get a Talisman of Indulgence, trying to join the ramp game a little late, and then follow it up with a Treacherous Blessing, which allows me to draw three cards. So I'll draw an extra one off of Mesa Enchantress. So drawing four cards here. Just trying to keep up with everyone else here and, and try not drawing too much of a target on my back here. Here comes Matt Zara, Renegade Recruiter. And he's gonna pass the turn because Zara does not have haste. But Zara is the one whenever it swings at you, you have to reveal your hand and then Matt gets to choose a creature from your hand to come into play tapped and attacking you. And then you get it back at the end of combat, but Here comes a Demonic Tutor from Jamie. I think Jamie's burned through a lot of their hand using Counter Magic. So it's looking to restock here. So it goes and gets a Time Twister, I believe that is. Yep. So we shuffle our graveyards and hands back into our library and then draw seven. Wanting to just restock after having burnt through a lot of cards, trying to slow Hog's roll. Hog's going to play a Rayab Master Smith. This two minutes. 2-2 says uh, whenever a creature control enchanted or equipped attacks, they get double strike, which is real gross. So here comes another attack, ramping through Sword of the Animist, and then increasing power through Black Blade Reforged. It's an enormous amount of damage, so much so that Jamie's going to need to double block this double striking Trampler, and still takes 10 commander damage after absorbing, what was that, 6? So it was a 16 power attack there. On to me, I'm going to produce a measly 1-1, one -one, and I'm going to try and throw down a Ghostly Prison here. Trying to deter these gross attacks. I'm also going to play a Forgeborn Orans. This 4-2 has Constellation. So when I enter the battlefield or another enchantment enters the battlefield, I can deal one damage. I'm going to follow that up with a Tectonic Reformation. Both of those points of damage are going to go towards that Rayav Master Smith to kill that thing that's giving double strike to Hogs attacking creatures. Jamie's seeing a nice opportunity here to steal a draw. is going to flash in a Notion Thief and steal my Mesa Enchantress draw trigger. Coming in via Tectonic Reformation. Hog seeing an even greater opportunity, fires off an instant speed heartwarming redemption before Notion Thief hits the battlefield. So able to discard a bunch of cards, draw a bunch of cards, and uh, now now Rayev is going to die to the damage I've dealt to it, and Notion Thief's on the battlefield stealing uh, my draws off of my Mesa Enchantress going forward. Matt's up swinging with Zara at Hog. Oh no, it's going to be at Jamie this time. Jamie's going to reveal their hand, showing them there's a mana drain of a Fierce Guardianship, two counter spells, a Gataxian Probe, and a single creature that can be stolen is Caustic Caterpillar. So Matt, having no other option other than taking Ca Caustic Caterpillar, is going to go ahead and take Caustic Caterpillar, having it coming into play tapped and attacking Jamie. Now, Notion Thief does have one toughness, so there's really no reason to block and cost Jamie two different cards that they own. So just going to let that damage through along with the Zara, going to 18. Matt's going to second main phase Scourge of the Throne. That has Dethrone. Whenever it attacks the player with the highest life total, gives Matt another combat step. So pretty good. Doesn't have haste, though. So we'll see that in action possibly next turn. Jamie fetching. Throwing down some more revised duels. Plays out that Caustic Caterpillar. And then Gitaxium probes Matt here. So the Caustic Caterpillar has plenty of great options on my board. And I think there was a discussion where Jamie said that Caustic Caterpillar has... Forgeborn Ariad's name on it because the Notion Thief is preventing me from drawing cards of Mess Enchantress, so likely the next trigger I can deal damage with will be directed at Notion Thief. So there's a bit of a negotiation going on between Jamie and Hog here about my board state, ironically. So there's a negotiation where Jamie will use Caustic Caterpillar to kill my Forgeborn Ariad's, but Hog says that's no longer necessary. I'm going to play a Jeska Thrice Reborn and use its zero ability to give Rograk triple strike, or triple its damage output, and it's gonna swing at me. So I think the last damage it dealt was 16, 
but now it's tripled, and I only had about like a, you know a four or five toughness on the battlefield. So it's just so much damage. There's no way I could have stopped that from happening. So I'm gonna die here, and then Jamie's gonna use that Casa Caterpillar to blow up Arcane Signet to try and put Matt off color. No, but Matt does manage to play a Mountain immediately afterwards, so it's still pretty solidly on color. This attack is gonna go at Hog. The Zara trigger is gonna reveal Hog's hand. Looking for a creature to put in play tapped and attacking Hog. There's a Sram and an Akiri. So I'm gonna take that Akiri. That Sram is basically a 2 2 that can draw cards whenever Matt were to play equipment or auras this turn, which is not gonna happen. But Akiri's a 3 3. And so that's just strictly gonna be better for Matt's game plan. And some of that damage is gonna go at Jessica. Does not wanna get triple striked out of the game like I just got killed. So they're gonna kill Jessica there and then the rest of the damage is going to hit Hog. That's going to allow Matt to untap because he hit the player with the highest life total with that Scourge of the Throne. And it has a second combat step. Now, not wanting a Saram on this attack step, is going to try and fish back towards Jamie to see if Jamie drew another creature in the last turn. But Jamie reveals the same hand plus an abrupt decay. So it's just a handful of removal spells and lands. So Matt's really stressing now because Matt was really hoping there'd be Timmy's in this matchup. Some, some players with some big, strong creatures that he could steal with Zara. It's just not happening. So Jamie's going to block that Akiri with this Notion Thief, able to kill... I think there's just no more draw engines online, so that Notion Thief is really no longer relevant. Uh, and it's just better to pad out that life total, which is down to 7 for Jamie. Here comes a Lightning Greaves, attempting to equip to Scourge. He's going to draw out a Swords to Plowshares from Hog. So getting a removal spell there on Equip. And then it's going to attempt to re-equip to Zara. So Scourge of the Thrones finally bit it after giving a couple, of, uh, you know, an extra attack step. Not terrible. And then Matt's going to follow that up, main phase two, still in main phase two, with this as foretold. But that's going to draw out Jamie's mana drain. So uh, Jamie mana draining a second time this game, getting rid of as foretold. A pretty good ramp spell uh, in that deck. I'm not sure how many one zero one two drops Matt plays, but. Enough that Jamie is probably worried about it. This is a Nurturing Pete land. It's like a Horizon land, so I can sack that to draw a card and lose a life, I believe. Oh, no, not lose a life. Just sack it to draw a card. And here comes Arkelos cast number two. So Arkelos back into play. Going to try and slow down this board state if it can live a turn or two. And then a Wilderness Acclamation allowing Jamie to untap all of their lands at the end step. Back to Hog. Hog in a pretty good spot. Really only has a Rogue Rack for attacking. Gonna activate Inventor's Fair. Which uh, sacks, allows him to sack it and go tutor up an artifact. There's gonna be Argentum Armor. So, Hog being a Godo CDH player knows how to get through Maze of If. Uh, so, it's gonna use Argentum Armor. Gonna cast that for six. It's free to equip due to Pure Steel Paladin after drawing a card off of Pure Steel Paladin. That card was such a house this game. Let me tell you. Gonna equip here for free and go to combat and swing. Gonna use the Argentum Armor trigger to destroy Maze of Ith, but Matt's gonna be able to respond here and untap Rograk to prevent, uh, you know, the 16 or it's probably like 18 damage now. Well, not double striking anymore, so it's more like, you know, 9 or something like that. Matt is still gonna take that Pure Seal Paladin plus 6 plus 6 damage. Back to Matt's turn, Matt's going to use cast a Charging Hellkite here, or Hellkite Charger. And it has haste, so an extra 5 flying. It's going to swing at Hog. Oh, and reveals a Goto Bandit Warlord. What do you know? Uh, Hog drew a Goto since the last time he was attacked. So Matt's going to get Goto into play, tapped and attacking Hog. And that's going to trigger to allow him to go put Whisper Silk Cloak from his deck into play. Getting an extra 3 damage in there, Matt's just, or, Hog's just going to take it. No reason to kill Godo with uh, Rograk. On to Jamie. Jamie's going to play a Mox Diamond. Some late game ramp, unfortunately. It doesn't have very much to follow up here, so... Going to pass, pass to Hog. Hog looking... Uh, spending six mana for a... What do you know? A Godo Bandit Warlord. And true as a CDH player is going to go to Helm of the Host. Which is a, a bit of an infinite combo here with Godo, especially because Hog can equip it for free through Pure Steel Paladin, but makes copies of Godos that aren't legendary, giving him extra attack steps. Jamie's gonna say heck no to that and use Nature's Claim to blow up that Helm of the Host before it equips. 
Hog's gonna play a Skull Clamp, triggering uh, the Pierce the Pattern draw card and go to combat. Here comes another Argenum Armor trigger. And that's gonna, I believe it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna blow up the char the Hellkite Charger. Just such a good piece of equipment, right? Just completely blows up fatties. And then the rest of the damage is going at Matt. Significant chunk of damage there. And no, I actually believe some of this was going at Jamie as well. But Jamie's gonna use Abrupt Decay to destroy Rograk. So finally, Rograk dies for the first time in this matchup after having dealt lethal damage to me and tons of damage elsewhere across the board. Yeah, that Pierce Seal Paladin had to go at Matt because I think our general armor only blows up permanents to the defending player that it attacks. Hog's gonna recast Rograk, but then immediately clamp it for free, just as a draw power. So it's a nice synergy there. Rograk has a 0 1, so it's like you have a clamp target in your command zone. After drawing some cards, Hog is gonna move to Equip Godo, which is still free to Pure Steel Paladin. So just put a pile of equipment back on Godo, making Godo pretty, probably close to lethal on either opponent. On to Matt. Matt looking for some way to just put a decent creature in opponent's hands so that he can just then steal it. Or maybe just play out some of the good creatures out of his, his, life, or his graveyard here. Here comes an Underworld Breach. Gonna recast Scourge of the Throne by exiling a couple of cards. So Scourge of the Throne entering the battlefield again. And then gonna move to equip. Give that thing haste. So Hog has the highest life total, so attacking Hog gives Scourge a plus one, plus one counter. And then also gives Matt a second attack step, so nice and strong. Hog reeling his hand shows that he has a hammer and a zon. I think that's a smothering tie too. A Saram and then what looked like a Boros Charm, I think. Gonna take that Saram, put it into play tapped on attacking Hog. Hog's gonna say, nah, I'm just gonna kill that thing with Godo. He doesn't need the Saram anymore. He's over it. His board state's in really strong shape here. Gonna deal, get Hog all the way down to four life with that hit. And it's, or the following attack step going at Hog a second time. Trying to just kill Hog here. But uh, afterwards, Underworld Breach dies. On to Jamie. Jamie's gonna draw go, not finding any gas, or just, you know, more control pieces. Trying to survive that way. Back to Hog, who's in a strong board state here. Has got lethal on both opponents. Assuming there's not a bunch of shenanigans in Jamie's hand. Gonna cast a Hammer of Nazan, so that gives the quick creature plus two plus zero oh, and indestructible. And when it or another equipment enters the battlefield, they auto equip. So that's gonna go on a Godo, making Godo indestructible as well as lethal on an opponent. Here comes a Shadow Spear follow up. It's gonna draw out a Fierce Guardianship from Jamie. Jamie's gonna counter that, and then Godo is going to go to combat and swing. Crystal Paladin is going to go at Jamie and blow up that island that had the wild growth on it, whereas the Godo was going to kill Matt. And then afterwards, uh, that's going to give, I think, a second combat step. And then he's going to swing at Jamie at the second combat step. Jamie reveals that they had two fetch lands in hand, so not much gas left in the tank after that grindy matchup against a dominant Boros Voltron deck. So. That's a wrap on this gameplay episode. The win goes to Hog the Spike with Arden and Rograk. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay matchup. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Let us know you enjoyed it, my narrations, hopefully. And that uh, we'll be doing a lot more of these gameplay matchups until we get bored of Commander Legends, but we've only scratched the surface. So be sure to stay tuned for more deck techs from Timmy's, Johnny's, and Spike's. Timmy was channeled in this matchup through Spirit of Voltron, but you will see uh, more traditional Timmy builds coming up pretty soon as well. So, as always, great minds, through alike. See ya.